welcome to my channel with a new topic it is for again the postgraduate students the today's topic is effluent treatment plant the principle and operation earlier i have covered this topic separately for dairy plant effluent treatment and meat plant effluent treatment today it is going to be more on general aspect but in more details about the principle that includes what is ETP, what is the need, what is the mechanism and principles and methods of treatment and more details about the operations with diagrams etc. So let us first understand what is ETP that is the effluent treatment plant. It is a process design for treating the industrial wastewater for its reuse or safe disposal to the environment because there are separate rules and regulations for against the discharge of this polluting water into the common sewage. I have discussed that both in dairy plant and in meat plant or, or in abattoir large amount of wastewater is produced. So we call though commonly we call it effluent but in a more technical sense the incoming dirty water is called as influent. The untreated industrial water is called as influent and after treatment which is going out that is considered as effluent and in the process of treatment the solid part which is separated from the wastewater that is called sludge. So this is the three thing we need to understand influent effluent and sludge. So let us understand what is the need of ETP. It is to clean industry effluent or wastewater and recycle it for further use to reduce the usage of fresh portable water in industries to cut expenditure on water procurement to meet the standards for emission or discharge of environmental pollutants from various industries set by government and avoid hefty penalties and finally to safeguard environment against pollution and contribute in sustainable development. So as we have explained earlier both in dairy and meat industry it emits large amount of wastewater which cannot be directly discharged into the sewage so it has to be treated and such water should not pollute the environment and we should reduce the use of water and make it safe. Now briefly we will talk about design of ETP. The design and size of the ETP depends upon quantity and quality of the industry's discharge effluent. That is the how much effluent and what is the quality, how dirty it is. Then land availability, that is a very important factor how to design about the ETP and the monetary consideration for construction, operation and maintenance. So finance or budget is very important for design of ETP. The area dimension depends on quality of wastewater to be treated, flow rate and type of biological treatment to be used. In case of less available land, we can go for common effluent treatment plant so that the land can be saved. So when there is not much land available, there can be common ETP for saving the land. Now you will see about the treatment levels and mechanisms of ETP. The first is the treatment levels. It can be of four category like preliminary treatment, primary treatment, secondary treatment and tertiary or advanced treatment. So these are the general treatment levels for treatment of all kind of influence from all industries and then treatment mechanism on a technical way we can say that is physical treatment, chemical treatment and biological treatment. So first we will discuss about preliminary treatment. So here mostly we are considering about the common wastewater treatment from all industries, especially food industry. 
the purpose here is physical separation of big sized impurities like cloth plastic wooden logs or paper or in case of meat and dairy industry there can be many large objects muscle pieces bone pieces or skin and even there can be plastics the common physical unit operations at preliminary levels are cleaning a screen with openings of uniform size is used to remove large solids such as plastics cloth etc generally maximum 10 mm is used then sedimentation the physical water treatment process using gravity to remove suspended solids from water and then clarification used for separation of solids from fluids so these are the preliminary treatment screening sedimentation and clarification now about primary treatment here the purpose is removal of floating and settleable material such as suspended solids and organic matter the methods are both physical and chemical methods are used in this treatment level the chemical unit processes are like chemical unit process are always used with physical operations and may also be used with biological treatment processes chemical processes use the addition of chemicals to the wastewater to bring about changes in its quality and the examples are like ph control coagulation chemical precipitation and oxidation in continuation about primary treatment the ph control it is to adjust the ph in the treatment process to make wastewater ph neutral for acidic waste when the ph is low we can use sodium hydroxide so sodium carbonate calcium carbonate or calcium hydroxide and when the water is having alkaline waste that is in high ph we can use sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid and then we can use chemical coagulation and flocculation coagulation refers to collecting the smaller part solid particles dispersed in a liquid into a larger mass this chemical coagulants like aluminum sulfate which is also called alum and ferrous sulfate are added to wastewater to improve the attraction among fine particles or solid particles so that they come together and form larger mass that is called flux a chemical flocculant usually a poly electrolyte enhances the flocculation process by bringing together particles to form larger flux which settle out more quickly flocculation is aided by gentle mixing which causes the particles to collide so this is the second part of primary treatment now let us understand about secondary treatment as i said the primary treatment is more of physical process and chemical process whereas secondary treatment is more biological process so this is the biological unit process to remove or reduce the concentration of organic and inorganic compounds biological treatment process can take many forms but all are based around microorganisms mainly bacteria now this happens in two way one is called aerobic process another is called anaerobic process in the aerobic process the aerobic treatment take place in the presence of air or oxygen it utilizes those aerobic microorganisms which use oxygen to assimilate organic impurities that is convert them into carbon dioxide water and biomass and in the anaerobic process the anaerobic treatment take place in the absence of air it utilizes anaerobic microorganisms which do not require air to assimilate organic impurities the final product here is methane and biomass here we can see an example with diagram of biological process and this is aerobic that is activated sludge process sludge is the solid part coming out after treatment that will have the bacteria 
so that is used like a culture and it is added with the incoming effluent and when it is in presence of air given sufficient time these microorganism will grow and digest all the solid materials present so that is what is activated sludge process now the final level of treatment is tertiary or advanced treatment here the purpose is final cleaning process that improves water quality before it is reused recycled or discharged to the environment the mechanism is it removes remaining inorganic compounds and substances such as nitrogen and phosphorus and also to remove bacteria virus parasites which are mostly pathogenic and cause public health hazard they are also removed at this stage so there is a sanitary treatment the methods are like alarm which i have told earlier here it is used to remove the additional phosphorus particles and groups remaining solid together for easy removal in the filter then chlorine is used to disinfect the treated water by removing the microorganisms in waste water including bacteria virus parasites so chlorine is used for this treatment and then finally the remaining chlorine is removed by adding sodium bisulfate just before its discharge so in a, another lecture i am going to talk more details about the advances in effluent treatment plant the modern advances in effluent treatment plant i will going to i will have a separate lecture here we can see a flow chart with different level of effluent treatment the incoming wastewater there is preliminary treatment then there is a primary treatment and the sludge is going and the activated sludge is used in the biological treatment and then secondary clarifier and finally disinfection that is the tertiary treatment and then the final effluent is going out for reuse or discharging into the environment here this table summarizes the whole process of effluent treatment in the top we can see different level pre treatment primary secondary tertiary and ultimate discharge and next below each treatment there is the what kind of treatment is done it is given like in the green and other things and at the last line it is given what kind of effect it does so the pre -treat, uh, pre treatment or preliminary treatment where we use the screening or equalization or oil separation so it is doing a water conditioning or making it ready for further treatment in primary treatment there is chemical where neutralization coagulation flocculation it adjusts the ph and remove the nutrients and metals then in the physical part there is sedimentation flocculation that removes the suspended solids then there is secondary treatment where activated sludge or aerated lagoon tiklik filter anaerobic lagoon stabilization so it is done both aerobic and anaerobic it helps in removing the soluble biodegradable organic materials mostly by using bacteria and then the tertiary treatment where there can be ultrafiltration carbon adsorption ion exchange sand filtration denitrification coagulation etc that is a first part to remove all non biodegradable materials or other remaining organic materials and there is a disinfection that is also part of tertiary treatment which removes the uh, the all the pathogens or parasites by using chemical like chlorine or ozone and then finally it is for disposal which go to the receiving water or surface or in the ground and finally when the main discharge another is coming the sludge solid discharge that can go for landfilling or incineration now we will discuss about etp plant operation the first is the screen chamber it remove relatively large solids to avoid abrasion of mechanical equipments and clogging of hydraulic system number 2 is collection tank the collection tank collects the effluent water from the screening chamber stores and then pumps it 
to the equalization tank and number three is equalization tank here all the water is mixed together so the effluents do not have similar concentrations at all the time the pH will vary time to time or day to day so effluents are stored from 8 to 12 hours in the equalization tank resulting in a homogeneous mixing of effluents and helping in neutralization it eliminates shock loading on the subsequent treatment system so there will be a similar uniform quality of the water the continuous mixing also eliminates settling of solids within the equalization tank and it also reduces suspended solids and total soluble substances now in continuation about the ETP plant operation, the number four is flash mixer that is coagulants were added to the effluents, lime 800 to 1000 ppm to correct the pH up to 8, 9, this is when the effluent is acidic, then alum 200 to 300 ppm to remove color and for helping in flocculation, then poly electrolyte 0.2 2 ppm to settle the suspended matters and reduce the SS and TSS. The addition of the above chemicals by efficient rapid mixing facilitates homogeneous combination of flocculates to produce micro flocks. Number 5 is Clary flocculator. In the Clary flocculator, the water is circulated continuously by the stirrer. Here, the overflowed water is taken out to the aeration tank. The solid particles settle down and collected separately and dried. This reduces again the SS and TSS. Flocculation provides slow mixing that leads to the formation of macroflux, which then settles out in the clarifier zone. The settled solids, that is the primary sludge, are pumped into sludge drying beds. In continuation of plant operation, number six, aeration tank. The water is passed like a thin film over the different arrangements like staircase shape. Dosing of urea and diammonium phosphate is done. Water gets direct contact with the air to dissolve the oxygen into water. The BOD and COD values of water is reduced up to 90%. Then number seven, clarifier. The clarifier collects the biological sludge. The overflowed water is called as treated effluent or simply effluent and disposed out. The outlet water quality is checked to be within the acceptable limits as prescribed by BIS. Through pipelines, the treated water is disposed into the environment like river water, barren land or other lakes, etc. So this is the last part of the sequence of plant operation. Number eight is sludge thickener. The inlet water consists of 60% water and 40% solids. The effluent is passed through the centrifuge. Due to centrifugal action, the solids and liquids are separated and the sludge thickener reduces the water content in the effluent to 40% water and 60% solids. The effluent is then reprocessed and the sludge collected at the bottom. And the last part in the sequence is the drying bed, that is the sludge drying bed. The primary and secondary sludge is dried on the drying bed and then it is taken away for further use. Here we can see the complete flow of operation in effluent treatment plant. There is influent, screening, equalization and mixing and then there is pH adjustment, then dispersive unit and it goes for biological treatment. I, here it is by aerobic, it can be sometime anaerobic and finally some chemicals are added. The BOD or COD is reduced 90%, then it goes to sedimentation tank, the pH is checked and the treated water is discharged out either to water bodies or other fish pond and then this thick sludge undergo the thickening treatment further and the water content is reduced and this thick sludge goes back for use in the biological treatment. 
so i have already discussed the principles the different levels of treatment and the mechanism of operation in the fn treatment now some of those steps again i am going to show with diagram very briefly so here is screening screening is the filtration process for the separation of coarse particles from the effluent stainless steel net with varying pore size can be utilized screens are cleaned regularly to avoid clogging so these are very large structure through which the all the wastewater has to pass through for screening and to remove the large size particles and waste matters here we can see about the equalization tank equalization tank makes the wastewater homogeneous retention time depends upon the capacity of the treatment plant it could be 8 to 16 hours so here we can see the influent coming up the screening to this tank and then spray of water coming from dyeing unit and air is infused mixed together and then we finally get cool and homogeneous influent with ph and it goes for ph correction tank we can see the ph correction tank in this tank ph of the influent is corrected to meet the standard acid or alkali is added depending on the nature of the influent to decrease or increase the ph now the, here is the ph correction tank in which the water is coming from the equalization tank then acid or alkali is added and finally the water is going out with modified or corrected ph here we can see disperse unit or disperse tank it mixes the sludge coming from the recycle tank with wastewater for proper aeration so here the discharge water is coming the sludge from recycle tank is coming and mixing with the sludge with the wastewater that is the aerobic treatment that is the activated sludge will act on the wastewater and then it undergoes the further reduction in the waste matter contains and reduce the bod here is the schematic diagram of aeration tank in the aeration tank the mixture of waste water with sludge is going the aerobic bacteria is added and air is added and finally is going out discharge to the sedimentation tank so there the solids will slowly settle down in the sedimentation tank so here the reaction happening is organic matter reacting with air and that is the oxygen and with the presence of bacteria mainly bacteria is going to act in aerobic condition and the solid matters will be broken to carbon dioxide and water so here once again we can see the aeration tank how it works the function of aeration is oxidation by blowing air the aerobic bacteria is used to stabilize and remove organic material presence in waste so in the wastewater there are large amount of organic material which has to be broken and digested by the bacteria in aerobic condition that is the aerobic treatment or aerobic tank now recycle sludge to aeration tank the sludge obtained from the treatment is again oxidized to minimize the pollution from sludge and then live bacteria of sludge is again used in aeration to utilize this bacteria for further treatment so there is a sludge recycle tank in which the sludge from thickening unit is coming mixing of sludge with the wastewater newly coming and then it gets sludge to aeration tank through disperse unit which i have explained already here is return sludge tank it function of return tank or recycle tank is to mix water with sludge so this mixture is then passed to aeration tank through disperse tank so here is the last part that is the sedimentation tank after the aerobic treatment that is the secondary treatment biologically that water goes to sedimentation tank and then from there much of the clean water comes out that may undergo the tertiary treatment before discharging to water bodies or lake or river and the thick sludge with water goes for sludge thickening you need to remove much of the water and then the thick sludge goes back for recycling 
so sedimentation tank as i already mentioned in this tank sludge is settled down effluent is discharged from the plant through a fish pond and the sludge is passed to the sludge thickening unit where some more water should be removed here is the effluent discharge after final treatment it reaches to this tank and from where it goes for the out outside to the system so here is the schematic diagram of sludge thickening unit the sludge is coming from the sedimentation unit which will have 60% uh, water now by this thickening the, the the sludge will have less water like 40% and much of the solid sludge will come out which undergo drying and for further discharge and use so here is the sludge thickening unit the 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 here sludge is thickened and discharged out and the partial amount of sludge is returned back to the aeration tank from thickening unit through recycle tank called return sludge tank or disperse tank and after that it goes for sludge drying bed so in the picture we can see actual sludge drying bed here we can see the dried sludge that can be used as fertilizer or for land filling etc or even for burning depending on the nature of the sludge here we can see the bia standard for discharged water or treated water ph 5.5 to 9 total soluble substances less than 100 mg per liter or 100 ppm oil and gas that is 10 mg per liter or 10 ppm bod 30 mg per liter or 30 ppm it should be less than 30 and the cod less than 250 ppm so now we are at the end of today's lecture today i have tried to discuss in a more general aspect of effluent treatment though we have separate lecture on effluent treatment in dairy plant and abattoir or meat plant here i have tried to discuss the basic general principles and operations for treatment of all kind of waste water coming from different industries for better understanding so i have explained what is the level of treatment what is the principles and mechanism of treatment and how the plant operation is done different step by step and then once again i have explained all the steps with proper diagrams so hope this makes more clarity about the effluent treatment so effluent coming from any industry especially from food industry should be treated before the water is discharged thank you